uh, increasingly seeing Asia being the hotbed for uh, different kinds of online businesses and it's now being driven by a shift in technology. Uh, what is most interesting today in Asia is the quick adoption of this technology and that's what I'm going to discuss with my panelists today. We're seeing um, a shift in uh, in the kind of um, uh, companies that are being developed out of uh, Asia, also the technology that is moving from developed countries uh, to Asia and also um, another very interesting point about entrepreneurs is, is the opportunity that lies today. You know, in your uh, business and your experience, what have you seen and uh, what do you feel about this changing ecosystem and its uh, survival? Perfect. A very interesting question. Um, so, to me, uh, I am the founder and um, CEO of a company named Miss Bees. We do beauty services uh, via our mob mobile platform and we deliver the beauty services to your home at your convenience 24-7. So, as a mobile company, we see tremendous shifting in the past three years. Uh, when we started the company, we still were concerned about the adoption of smartphones which now stopped to be uh, any type of concern. And now uh, we see our customers uh, shifting from e-commerce to mobile e-commerce. And what's interesting about is that we go with our phone everywhere. It's technically becoming slowly and carefully our uh, wearable. And as a wearable, it keeps collecting data about our behavior, our friends, our usage, our purchases. And uh, we can see immediately how we expect as consumers, the phone to know who we are. So we kind of expect brands to personalize their experience because if they know and collect this information about us, at least what we can gain out of it is the personalization and the seamless experience that we experience now. So I think that's the major shift and the way we manage our platform is really to create real-time communication with customers based on the data that we collect. And uh, I think this is also why large corporates now shift to instant messaging and incorporate many technologies uh, in communication with customers to get this real-time, quick response and adapt accordingly. Uh, John, what is your point of view on that? Uh, do you see uh, uh, Asia upping its uh, game in uh, e-commerce? How is it different from other Western countries? Yeah, so I run a, an e-commerce company in Los Angeles. We're about six years old. And I think it's there's been an, there's been a massive shift in in the tools available, the, the cost of them, and the speed to market over the last call it decade. Uh, when we launched the Books Company in 2012, it wasn't early, but it was certainly earlier than now. And Shopify wasn't a thing then. Um, the the tools that were available were so uh, so fewer and so much more expensive and so much more complex to actually make work. And um, I think what's, what's really happened in the Asian market is there's a, there's a sort of jumping off point from what has already happened in the US and, and other Western markets where the pain of going through that transformation has already been borne by those markets. And the Asian markets are now sort of hitting the ground running in a way that is so much faster because of so many trials and errors and mistakes made within those other markets that they can learn from. Um, I think the, the mobile shift is another one. You know, when we started the company, 75% of our sales were through desktop. Today, 70% of our sales are through mobile. Um, and that's in a five-year period we've seen that shift. And again, when we started the company, we focused on desktop because that's where our sales were. In a lot of these, um, these Asian markets, they don't even think about the desktop as a place to start. It's really mobile first. And so I think a lot of the learning and, and the reps that, that we've had on the, on, in the West have, have helped uh, really accelerate things in Asia. Uh, Sammy, in your experience, have you felt uh, that new technology adoption is the driver for uh, the changing ecosystem that we see with respect to e-commerce? And do you see high-end technology beyond mobile? 
you know we are we have uh, e-commerce companies like amazon looking at experimenting with drones where do you see um, all of that moving um technology thank you very much technology is uh, enables us now to do so many different things it's um it helps us achieve our purpose in life much more easily my own company we are a life insurance company Now, who would have thought that a life insurance company can actually create something meaningful and something that's relevant? But we're finding now that technology totally transforms this space. And not only that, we're actually finding new technology. For example, we've created a currency of well-being called a U-coin. You can earn the U-coin through very simple things like walking and meditating. and that new currency of well-being where we actually are collecting data from thousands of well-being apps out there in the ecosystem and recruiting data scientists to understand that data and then to create personal pathways for healing and for well-being to help people live their best lives something that technology can do which has never been able to do so the new technology can enable us to live richer more meaningful lives that's what i'm particularly excited about um, how much of investor interest lies in uh, the changing ecosystem for e-commerce we're we're seeing um, companies mushrooming at an alarming stage we have we have uh, you know stats that say we have up to 10 companies alone in india that start up on an everyday basis and these are all driven by technology i i think the landscape as an investor for e-commerce investment is changing quite a bit so uh first of all i would our, our crowd's perspective is very broad and global so i would differentiate what i see going on in more developed markets like the us uh, uh and uh, europe versus emerging markets and then China I kind of put in its own special category. So um when I look at in the developed markets I think that you know the, the the shift to e-commerce is already well underway so I have pretty much no interest in funding anyone that's trying to sell product online. I mean I think that's been done already. Uh and uh the the, the one exception to that might be someone that has some kind of amazing new model that's really new, unique and original that has never been seen before. But other than that, if you're selling product online, that ship has probably sailed. I can tell you that the kind of uh trends that do interest me are or that I'm trying to play off of are things like uh the getting uh offline and offline offline and online right. So clearly Amazon and Alibaba are opening stores. They're going to have a strong presence. That's very challenging for the traditional retailers. but also opens it up an opportunity. Um so I'm particularly interested in companies that are developing different types of tools that help uh traditional retailers compete in this emerging world. So that could be things like analytics. So I'm I'm actually launching a new investment on our crowd's platform around that uh in a company called CB4. Uh that's going to be launching soon. Um I'm I'm also interested in people that are providing critical pieces of infrastructure like delivery systems. There's been a big change in expectations around delivery and all kinds of retailers need help to be able to compete with what Amazon is doing in that area. Um and another area I'm interested in is payments. So I think uh there's still room for innovation in payments. I think credit cards are good for certain use cases, but I think there's interesting new technologies emerging there. So that's pretty much where I'm looking. And then the last one that I'll cite uh, although I think it'd be a challenge for me to look at but I did actually invest in but I'm open to are companies that are kind of disrupting a traditional retail sector that has high service requirements so there's been several examples of that in the US like mattresses for example we just did an investment in Casper as a mattress company um and you wouldn't think there's too much room for innovation there but just by bringing it online providing better service cutting out the middleman you can do a lot so um that's been played out quite a bit in the US i think that in other geographies it's still kind of early days so might there might be some opportunity there you're almost sounding like a death knell for uh, 
you know, e-commerce online. But the savior is that you say uh, that payment space still has uh, the window for growth. Um, Mario, tell me in your opinion, um, how much of um, what has existed in uh, the U.S. and other uh, countries has percolated to uh, other countries? Have you seen a ripple effect? And do you feel that uh, the U.S. has reached the uh, epitome of their growth and now there's not much more room left and that room will then be filled by other countries? Okay, interesting. So, so first of all, uh, definitely, I think there's a ripple effect in, in, in several countries, right? Because you get all the, you have a large amounts of capital in the U.S., so you can test a lot, fail a lot. I mean, I'm not saying that you you have to fail always, right? But you can test a lot, you can fail, and and uh, because the, the the size of the market, you 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 get to test and try new things, and that gets rippled to everywhere. So I'm I'm from Mexico City, actually. I'm not from the U.S., and we see a lot of direct to consumer startups, which is the most uh, I'd say the, the hottest thing in e-commerce, which is D2C brands, uh, there are just copycats from uh, the US or from elsewhere. And, I'm, and, and I've heard, I don't know very much about Asia, but I've heard that it's the similar case. 